This is a demonstration of the Seasoft program to visualize or see software. It was done by Steve Ike and myself, Joe Stephan. Here's a visualization of one directory containing about 20,000 lines of program code. Up to 50,000 lines can be displayed. Program file names are shown across the top. Each column represents a file. Each row of pixels represents a line within the file. It has proportional length and indentation to match the real line. If there are more than about 900 lines in a file, it wraps around to additional columns, as we see here in the center. Color I'll get to in a minute. Next, I'll create a magnifying window. Let me position it off to the side here. Now the mouse cursor changes to a rectangle, which matches the size of the magnifying window with a crosshair that matches the grade line in the window. So we can see a single source line in context. The code structure is still visible with block comments looking like blocks. This scalloping effect being if then else looping statements. And this sawtooth effect being case statements. It's as if you had taped a program listing to a wall. So far away, all you can see is one dot per character. On the left is a color bar, which indicates a statistic of interest. The initial display shows the age of the lines, with red as newest and blue as oldest. At the bottom center is displayed the change abstract and date for each color as it is touched by the mouse. And at the bottom right is a list of statistics about each change. This is a high interaction display, so the color bar can be turned off and anywhere the mouse touches will light a single change in a file. We can freeze on one change. Let me turn off indentation to make the uh, lines stand out better visually. And then look at these lines with the magnifier window. So we can see the exact line that was changed. You can also touch a file name. And all the lines associated with that file, all the changes associated with it, light up, along with associated changes in other files. So we can see that if we were going to change the second file here, uh, we had better look at the file that's in the middle of the screen, because when the first is changed, the second is often changed. So this display could be a training or rediscovery aid. These kinds of information might be obvious to an expert, but of course are lost when the expert moves on or any time you have a new person taking over a piece of code. Note these files we call rainbow files. This one was affected by over one quarter of the total changes to this file, which we can see in the lower left corner of the display. These small blue files weren't even recognized by the expert we identified and brought over. He thought they'd been done long ago by someone else in another part of the project. But if you look at the change history, we see that there are changes every other year or so. So clearly, these files could be moved to part of the project that is actively changing them and get them out of this directory structure. The color bar can be brushed with the mouse to show groups of changes. Here we can look at the most recent changes, perhaps that went into the latest release. This would be of interest to the system testers or to uh, project manager. Uh, a historical analyst or software process analyst might be interested in uh, changes sort of then and now. Uh, maybe a process change occurred about here. Uh, I see more green than blue than red. Uh, so clearly, there were larger changes then. Uh, the expert we identified told us that uh, there, it's true that there are many smaller changes now, which tend to be uh, bug fixes that had been deferred. Since we can look at a complete change history of this code, uh, we can look at other statistics of interest. Here's the color of the lines 
by age when they were deleted. Uh, we can get a sense of where there were a lot of lines deleted in a file. Uh, we can combine statistics and show two side by side. Here we're showing the color of the adding MR on the left and the color of the deleting MR on the right, uh, where black means that it's not deleted. Uh, we see many files, particularly this third one here from the left, with long bands of, of green colors where there's very little hue difference between the two colors. This is an example of what we call churn in our projects, where a line code that's added is immediately deleted, changed, changed again, and again, and again. We can also see which lines were for new features, which are in red, or in, for bug fixes, which are in blue. Uh, and this is particular of interest because we can combine this with other statistics. I'm going to end it with the adding MR so we can see the age of the bug fixes. We can continue with this idea and go to our split column mode. So we're showing the color of the, or age of the adding change on the left and the deleting change on the right. And now we can actually visualize another software engineering term, which would be fix on fix. Right here in this file, there's a slight hue difference, which I can see. Now I can accentuate that uh, by turning off most of the color scale above and below those colors. And then I can say I want to rescale that. And now you should see a stronger difference, even though it's a very small fix on fix. We know it's a fix on fix because the lines were added to fix a bug and then were again deleted to fix a bug, which was introduced by the first bug fix. This is the most complicated statistic we can display. There are several others of interest. Here is a project, which is uh, very close to what most people would consider to be release. Uh, this is most interesting when I sort of animate this by hand. We show the original version of the project and then uh, changes as each release uh, was put out. We see big releases and small releases. Uh, here we're getting to the international version, so we can see all the changes that were made for the international uh, version of this program. We can also show who changed which code. Here's uh, by programmer ID. Now, this is mostly this blue code where we saw all that churn before, uh, but surprisingly few bug fixes. It's done by TNK, which isn't too interesting or too informative. I can switch to programmer name, and we find that TNK is actually R.A. Fagan. Uh, one problem we've noticed is that uh, R.A. Fagan tend to spell his name with and without periods and spaces so that the user ID is actually a little more accurate. Finally, the last statistic we have is a concept called feature, uh, which it would be like a new feature in a program. And it's given a uh, somewhat cryptic number here. Uh, clearly, we need to add the abstract, and we'd have uh, more information. But uh, this is surprisingly useful to people already, because they often want to know what feature are they affecting by adding a new feature so that they know which uh, test plans to rerun. To summarize, we feel this is an effective way to visualize, visually extract data of interest from the mass of program change history data that was collected over eight years by this project, which we feel is the essence of scientific visualization.